a 2015 population of a little over 2 million people, the world's second biggest diamond producer by quantity and the world's first diamond producer by value. This is Botswana, Africa's longest surviving democracy. Botswana gained independence from the Great Britain on 30 September 1966. Before independence, it was called the Bichonaland Protectorate. A transformation from Bichonaland to Botswana was a very interesting one. Let's learn a few things about how Botswana gained independence and what Botswana is. One of the first things anybody from Botswana will tell you is that unlike a lot of other countries in Africa, Botswana was not colonized. Britain originally established the Bichonaland Protectorate on 31st March 1885, that's a long time ago, and they decided we're not going to give much attention and development to this little piece of desert whose profitability is dubious. Since they didn't want to waste precious time and resources on this barren land, the British put up the protectorate for adoption, first to southern Rhodesia and then later to the Union of South Africa. But before Bichonaland could become a little vagabond in southern Africa, Botswana traditional rulers Kama III, Sibylle I and Botwang I, who ruled the most powerful Botswana states, said, Hold up Britain! You can't just hand us to someone else to rule over us. We are here and we are fully capable of taking care of our own people. We've been doing it since long before you got here. Just when they thought they had won the battle, another threat came to their power from an Englishman by the name of Cecil Rhodes and his British South Africa company. By 1894, the British had all but agreed to allow Cecil Rhodes to control the country. The three chiefs decided, you guys aren't taking us seriously, so we're gonna go straight to England where we will see Colonial Master Joseph Chamberlain and ask for continued government protection of Bichonaland. Accompanied by W.C. Willoughby, on their trip to England, their pleas to the British government were unsuccessful. As a last resort, they turned to the London Mission Society, which out of fear that this man, Cecil Rhodes, would allow alcohol into the country, got support of other Christian groups and together with the chiefs, pressurized the British government. Public pressure mounted and the British government was forced to concede. The capital of the protectorate was established at Mafikeng, actually, in South Africa. In 1924, South Africa began pressing on the Channelands amalgamation into the Union of South Africa. And when the Tswana chiefs refused, economic sanctions destroyed whatever there was of the Channelands economy. During World War II, 10,000 Botswana volunteered to the African Pioneer Corps to defend the British Empire. After the war, Sretsa Kama, the legitimate heir to the Bangwatu tribe, went to study in England where he met and married an English woman, Ruth Kama. Tsegedi Kama, Sretsa's uncle, was furious at this breach of tribal custom and the South African authorities, still hoping to absorb Bichonaland into the Union of South Africa, this guy's were patient, I think it was the alcohol, were none too happy. The British government blocked Sretsa's chieftaincy and he was exiled from the protectorate to England. Bitterness continued until 1956 when Sretsa Kama returned with his wife to Bichonaland to serve as a minor official. In 1955, it had become apparent that Britain was preparing to release its grip on Bichonaland. Following the Sharpeville massacre in 1960, South African refugees Mozamai Mpo of the African National Congress and Philip Matante, a Johannesburg preacher affiliated with the Pan-Africanist Congress, along with K.T. Mutsete, a teacher from Malawi, formed the Bichonaland People's Party. Its immediate goal was independence of the protectorate. In 1962, Sretsa Kama and Kwet Masire formed the Bichonaland Democratic Party and were joined by Chief Batuen II of Nwagetsi. The BDP formulated a schedule for independence and promoted the transfer of the capital from Mafiken to Khaborone, which was within Bichonaland. And a countdown to independence was set up to allow for a proper transfer of power. That's how on 30 September 1966, the country, now called the Republic of Botswana, gained independence from the Great Britain. Botswana was economically transformed by the discovery of diamonds near Rapa in 1967. The mining concession was given to the Bears, with Botswana taking 75% of the profits. After the death of Kama in 1980, Sayyid Kumila took the helm. His presidency ended in March 1998 when Festus Mohai took over. Mahaya's rule ended in 2008 where, on 1st April, his Vice President, Lieutenant General Sotokama Ian Kama, became the fourth and current President of the Republic of Botswana. Today, Botswana boasts as the shining example of democracy in Africa and the world, a transparent nation, 
Botswana's governance has been praised by international organizations of repute. Botswana's economy, which was at ground level at independence, has seen the country grow from that little vagabond in the middle of Southern Africa to a powerhouse and an envy of many African states. Covering 582,000 square kilometers in area, Botswana is the 48th largest country in the world by area. A shocking detail about Botswana is that for a country that goes to bed early every day, it has a population of only a little over 2 million people. We celebrate our 49th Independence Day on September 30th, 2015. This is Botswana. Happy Independence Day, Botswana. Happy Independence Day, Botswana.